In this video, I'm going to show you how you can tell if you've got a mouse problem in your attic. Roughly 70% of all homes have mice in the attic from time to time. They necessarily don't live in your home. Just because you don't see them in your home or see their droppings in cupboards and in the basement doesn't mean you don't have mice. Now, they may be living up in the attic and they can slowly be damaging your insulation. And if it goes unnoticed for long periods of time, they could actually cause your attic to start to smell and then you have to remove all your insulation. And that can be expensive. I do recommend checking your attic periodically. And the way to do that is look for these paths. And they're called runways, mouse attic runways. And as the mice walk, they like to walk on top because they can move quicker. And as they pack it down, it makes it easier. And they'll make new paths to different parts of the attic. And they may be storing food in areas. If you put the camera down low into the path, you'll see the cavities. And if you see the bumps in the attic, well, that means you've got mice. It wasn't installed that way. And you can see here where the mouse is kind of like hanging out. And you can see his little path. And you can see his droppings. Another thing is, if you see mouse droppings, they're going to be scattered. You know, they don't really have a latrine. Now, if there's a pile of them, you better look straight up because that could be a bat issue. And um, I do have lots of videos on mice and bats and how they get in your house and how to get rid of bats. You can check those out. But there is a difference between mouse droppings and bat droppings. Um, here you can see how, how they are uh, packing down their runways. Now look at this. This is probably years and years of mouse activity. And if you got up real close, you'd see all their holes. And they do have holes and they travel also underneath all this. So you could imagine how much mouse droppings is mixed in with this. Now, you know, if it doesn't smell and it's not getting into the house, I'm not sure how that's going to affect you in the home. But a lot of people will hire somebody and have all that sucked out. And that gets expensive. I mean, think about doing a whole attic like that. You know, you could spend $10,000 and uh, removing uh, the insulation. And mice will hang out together. You know, and I'll tell you what, they'll have a lot big litters and mice will reproduce a couple times a year. So they, they think it won't be long before you got 50, 100 mice living up in your attic. And you'll be like, wow, they get in. You know, they you know, they just climb up the side of your house. They'll get into a little small hole, you know, the size of a smaller, like a penny. And they'll squeeze right in there. When they get larger, they may not be able to get out, so they'll be stuck up there. But you know what? The other mice will bring them food. They'll just steal their food. They'll eat nuts. And a lot of times, they'll bring their own food up and they'll pack it. And they'll just eat it all all winter. And you'll see them come in. Well, you won't see them, but they'll, they like to come in when it starts getting cold. Now, there's a difference. There are rats in attics, too. And there's a huge difference. For example, you know, the, the, uh, the rat ears are smaller. The mouse ears kind of stick up. They're, they're more floppy. You know, the rats are probably like, you know, 20 to 40 centimeters. The mice, you can see the little mouse is like 5 to 10. You know, and they also, the mice have smaller heads, you know, um, and also the rat's tail is long. It's not, it's like skin type. It's not hairy, um, unlike the mouse has a kind of a hairy, fuzzy kind of tail. You know, the whiskers <clears throat> on mice are triangular. And um, the snouts uh, also on, on mice are long, okay? And so um, there is a difference, generally the size. The size is the big, the big ticket here. Now, when you get up close, you can see the holes, and they're not going to be round like, you know, you see on cartoons. You know, the tails will flop, and they'll, they'll be triangular, and they'll be different sizes. And, you know, depending on, you know, how, uh, how much traffic goes into this hole. Now, this hole can travel to a nest area, you know, <clears throat> and there are some holes. You, you also see small droppings, and here you can see, you know, you can see, like, I count one, two, three, four holes. And sometimes they're underneath, you know, a couple pieces of insulation. <coughs> now, this is pretty obvious. Now, here, they like to hang out here because this is an attic access. And you notice how there's no weather stripping. And so the hot air is rising right up through here. And, you know, it's a lot 
warmer here. And guess what? The mice are hanging out here. That's why when you open up an access panel, a lot of times droppings will fall on your head because they're on top of that panel. And here's another hole and another hole. <clears throat> and I circled the hole in case you didn't see it. Now, this is this is kind of crazy. 30 million homes in, in uh, Canada and America have this insulation that's hidden underneath the newer insulation, but that's called vermiculite. And it uh, came from W.C. Grace uh, in Montana, Libby, Montana, and all the miners are dead and half the town is sick from cancer and all the towns uh, leading from there with the railroads that would bring this stuff, people got cancer. And it was because they hit a tremor like an asbestos, um, an asbestos layer that got mixed into this insulation. So, you know, this is going to be hidden too. And if you see this, that's a whole nother problem. And I do have videos uh, on asbestos, on, uh, uh, on, on, uh, it's called vermiculite. You can look it up. I also have other videos on, on how mice get in. You want to check those out. Another thing is I have a service called Call Marco with a Question for people all over the country that can't solve their house problems. A lot of times people, you'll hire an engineer, you'll hire a mold guy or a sound guy, and you just can't figure out what's causing the spots and the stains. And I do have a service. Uh, just Google call Marco with a question. And Marco's with a K. And within 15 minutes to 40 minutes, and it's a pretty small fee, we can try to solve your problem. Sometimes you'll send me some photos. But um, I do, I'm probably at a 95% uh, solve rate. So these mice here probably got some type of cancer from asbestosis or, or you know, mesothemioma or something. But, you know, mice get cancer too. And the, by the way, the tremolite is the smallest asbestos particle. You only need one or two fibers to cause cancer. Now, sometimes people put insulation vertically, you know, up on the, up into the rafter spaces. And if the mice run up that way, you can actually see the urine. And this path is, you can see what the urine does. It kind of packs it. And this actually smells. And if you open up your attic access and you get a whiff of like a wildlife type odor, or urine type odor. Well, that's kind of a problem. Eventually, you know, that could permeate, you know, into the drywall and maybe into the home. And you can see here our paths and you can see the urine stains. And um, I'm, I'm, here's the arrows in case you didn't know what they look like in the other photos, but there they are. And there's a little mouse and, you know, you know, just to, maybe the insulation isn't um, high enough. Don't run along the, the tops of the joists because they like to move quick. You know, that's a quick path. And they're going to take the leaf path of resistance. And, of course, these are the brothers and sisters. And <laughs> they didn't all die like that. Um, with this space, this is uh, this was set up for photo. And I, this is not even one of my photos. I, I was able to find this um, at a show. But these are the best mouse traps in my book. And when you put poison up, it's kind of like, you know, makes them sick. And if you're a mouse, you'd be getting poisoned. It's, a, it's like a slow death, you know. And not only that, then you can't find the mouse. And he, and that's when you smell a dead mouse. And, like, oh, I smell that mouse. And it, you're going to smell for a week or two before it, you know, bef before um, the odor goes away. Now, chipmunks are a little bit longer. Rats are like six weeks. And as the animal gets bigger, the longer the odor. But mice are about two weeks. And so when you do the poison thing, you're going to smell it because they're going to they're going to probably go down a wall or something. You're going to smell through an outlet. You just you won't be able to find it. And so the, these are good because you go up and check them. You know what you do is you set them all up one day, a bunch of them. And these are cheap. You set them up all over and try. You know you could try like you. Could, some people will take um peanut butter and mix some bacon in with it. And you know look at the internet. There's a you know some mice like different types of treats better than others. You know, I'm not sure cheese works though. <laughs> and so you set all these up one day and you can get them all. And that maybe not in one day, but you can get most of them. And some of these are pregnant. Just think about that. If you didn't catch them, that's going to be 10 more mice. And each of those mice can reproduce. So, hey, um, check me out. If you've got any problems with your home that you can't solve, just Google call Marco with a question. Uh, that's with a K. Please rate and subscribe. I do have a lot of other videos. Um, some of these videos I do um, on the road like this one, and I do some in my studio where I got better microphones and, you know, more mixing type material. 
But uh, these are basically learning videos. And uh, please rate and subscribe. Thank you.